to uh, say that the views expressed uh, are not necessarily those of the staff or management of WKSL, Sports Agency Broadcasters, or EXP Realty, but certainly we invite you to uh, enjoy the show. Uh, we will have a guest, um, and if you would like to join the conversation, it is uh, 772-340-1590. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Hello, dear. Greg, you're so much prettier today. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see you here. We Hi, did... Carol. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, I have to grab a, a rookie on the board. I, I've done this before, but it's long stretches in between. Yeah. So, <laughs> patience, a little patience. We'll get there. We're doing fine. Doing fine. <laughs> So just to remind everybody, you're welcome to call in and ask your questions about the real estate, um, local real estate industry. If you like, you can reach us at 772-340-1590. That's the phone number here at the uh, radio station on, and we are on WPSL and WSTU and Martin County Fair started this weekend. So wow. it goes through the week. So make sure that you check it out. Yeah, that'll be fun. That's why I've seen all these people with little pigs on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe. Not little pigs. They're big pigs. Okay. <laughs> I think they're probably going to have something to do with the fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. And, and apparently they're, uh, they are still at the old location. They'll be yes. going out uh, to the new location. Oh, really? Soon. Oh, yeah, okay. I think the new one is still under construction. Oh, well, for some reason, I thought it had already changed, but well, that's, yeah, I, that's it, it's where it's down just down, south of downtown. Right. right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. On, on Old, um, Dixie. Old Dixie. Old Dixie. Yeah. Dixie. Yeah. Right. That's a nice area, though. That's nice. I imagine it, if it gets bigger, it's going to that, that's why. they. Well, have I think that's why they're the moving it, because it's growing yeah. so much and yeah. they just don't have the space. They there. need parking. Yeah. Right. Right. The crowds, right. Yeah. right. right. Yeah. Well, that's fun. I remember as a kid going to the fair and going to the farm shows and all that fun stuff well we had a, a thing in kansas city too it was called the american royal it was um horses and oh wow you know all the equestrian. barrel riding equestrian stuff and okay that kind of thing too like Along they do down south the farm stuff yeah that was fun though i always loved going to that yeah, well, it, it's fair season as soon as uh martin county ends then st lucy county, yep, right? Saint lucy county yes. right yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> february is the month yeah <laughs> right well, they, it's a good month. Yeah, definitely. Is. Happy oh, Valentine's yeah. to everybody. <laughs> Same to you. Yes, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. So <laughs> we have a super that. guest today. I am so excited to announce. Um, and she has such a busy schedule. So we really appreciate her taking the time out to be on our show. We want to introduce Michelle Franklin, who is the St. Lucie County property appraiser. So welcome, Michelle. We really appreciate your time today. Good morning. It is my pleasure to join you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks. Same to you. To you. To see you. I see you in your pretty red. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Everybody will be ready to celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. We started this weekend because we had a We Love Your Business event at our office this weekend with Mr. Softy. Yeah. And um, Valentine's all over the place. Yeah. But I, it was a good turnout. It, we had beautiful weather. It didn't start raining until a half an hour after the event ended. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, was, it was warm. Actually, I was sad. Yeah, it was a beautiful yeah. day. It was yeah. really nice. We really lucked yeah. out. Yep. I unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I didn't get to be at that function. I had my uh, niece is getting married and they had a bachelorette thing for her. So I went to that Saturday. So. We fun. thought about you. Yeah, I thought about <laughs> you guys too. So, <laughs> but it was it was nice to get to see everybody and meet her friends and all that kind of thing. They're getting married in April fifteenth. Oh, <laughs> they say oh, tax day. That's what they say, and she goes, "Not this year. It's not." <laughs> oh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that, you'll remember your anniversary that way for sure. Yeah. So, Michelle, can you? Uh, because we have so many new residents in the area, can you just uh, take a couple of minutes? to um, let everybody know how you got to where you are? Okay, yes. So I actually started in the property appraiser's office back in January of 2004. Um, of course, I share that I was, you know, a young teenager at that time. Absolutely. Really, <laughs> you know, 
so many years ago. Um, but yes, yeah, so worked in the office several years. Um, had the pleasure of working within each department throughout the office. Um, in two in 2016, our property appraiser uh, Ken Pruitt actually decided he was going to retire, and at that point, I threw my hat in the ring. Very very blessed and the voters of St. Lucie County chose me to actually succeed him in office. And so I have been the property appraiser. I took office in January of 2017. So I'm on my second term and I'm just, I'm, I love it. Best job ever. That's great. Well, and we love you too, because you Thanks. are just so involved in the community and Hi. you are always available for our Realtor Association. We appreciate all of the knowledge and information that you bring to us. Well, I thank you. Yes, I well, and we believe here within the office that, you know, our it's public service. So we are here to serve you. So I encourage whether it's real estate professionals or you know an individual homeowner, if you have questions related to the office, call us. We we want to be here and we want to assist. Right. Why don't you why don't you go ahead and give that number right now? Sure. 772-462-1000 is the line to the office. You can also find on on the web um, www.paslc.gov. So PA stands for property appraiser, SLC stands for St. Lucie County, .gov. And really it's one-stop shop for anything to do with the property appraiser's office, whether you just have a quick question, you're curious about the value of your property or maybe your neighbors or a, or a piece of property that you're interested in you want to learn more about it or you want to file for an exemption you can do all of that online yes and i can tell you if you call the phone number from personal experience that a person really does answer the phone <laughs> absolutely yeah. yes that's awesome it's wonderful yeah <laughs> monday through friday eight to five okay, right yeah. monday through friday eight to five Yep. And for those of you that are tech savvy, we also have a chat feature. So if you'd like to, you know, pop on and you just have a real quick question, um, you know, nice and easy one. You're like, oh, I, I know they've told me before, but I forgot, you know, how much exactly or what is the filing deadline for Homestead, which is actually March 1 coming very quickly. Right, March 1st. Um, you, know, you hop on there and do a little chat during the work day and we can respond to that as well. Okay. That's yes. So as long as you're talking about March 1st, explain <laughs> to everybody that that is the deadline for. So that is the deadline for filing for exemptions for this tax year. So what some people um, have a challenge with is, especially if you come from another area, our tax year, we pay the taxes in arrears. So we if here at the property appraiser's office are going to place a value on about 174,000 real estate parcels each and every January 1. We work through that information. We're going to mail you a trim notice in August. And so you always, always, always want to check that August information out. Um, and then you're going to get a tax bill in November. So that November tax bill, let's say you did not occupy the property, you did not own and occupy it on January 1, that tax bill is actually in the name of the person who did own and occupy. That is their exemptions. So if you purchased after January 1, you have until the following March 1 to file for an exemption. So if you practice basically a whole 60 days. Of 60 days of filing? Did I add that up right? No. No. Months. Just, months. What, what the easy, the easy thing to remember is whenever you purchase, after you've moved in and you've whatever you've done, painted the walls or put new carpet in or you know, picked out whatever new items you picked out, then it's time to file for an exemption. So some people, you know, you have to own and occupy by January 1. You may forget that March 1 deadline. Honestly, the March 1 deadline we're going to pre-file you or we're going to late file you. So just come in anytime. The important thing is to know that there is an exemption available as long as this is your primary residence and you are a resident of the state of Florida. And then to come into the office or to hop online and file for the exemption. So th that's, the, that's the main takeaway. Just know that you need to file. I have one quick question. Do you, once you've owned that property and lived in it for a few years, do you continue to need to file each March? No, or it follows you. So for most people, once you file, you're set. Okay. Now there's a caveat there because if you make a change to your deed, so if you end up 
maybe getting married or maybe dissolving a marriage right. or maybe you add an add a child or you know anything that maybe you put your property into a trust right. so there are situations like that when those things happen where you would need to refile i see but if oh, there's no you. change made to the deed then you do not need to refile and we work really hard to send out individual communications to people who get married get divorced put the property into a trust to notify them that they need to refile. Oh, very good. Okay. That's excellent. even though it is each property owner's responsibility themselves to refile. We, we try to be helpful and try to catch every one of them to, to remind people mm -hmm. life is busy. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on in the world. That's true. Yes, that's true. That's so nice of you to do that though, because you wouldn't really have to, but it's really, it's awesome that you keep up with people and help to help them to remember yeah. to do that. we really try and the professionals here in the office will tell you i have a i have a pretty soft heart i don't want anyone to go without an exemptions that they legally are entitled to so we really try to go above and beyond to to help people that's fabulous all right and, and there are a couple of uh, groups uh specifically seniors veterans who need to pay attention to uh, what's available to them absolutely there there are several different types of exemptions i will say that most property owners are going to qualify for the one homestead exemption. Um, there are uh, other exemptions. I encourage you to hop online and, and research those. Widow, widowers, senior exemption, that is for persons 65 or older that are on a limited income. Right. So generally speaking, Social Security does not apply to that, um, but it's a limited income. This year, it is 32000 Oh, you're testing me. 32,561, I believe it is, or 551, right around in there um, for a total household income. But again, if you even have a remote question about it, call us. We'll talk about your individual situation and let you know if, in fact, um, you know, that you should have come in and apply for an, uh, an exemption. That's great. Yes. Okay. And there is a very good uh, booklet that's available also that we have. So if anybody wants a copy of that booklet, they can let us know and we can get it out to them. Yep. And it's online. And it's online too. Okay. Yep, it is on the website as well. Okay. You know, the, it, the sad part of this, there are a lot of seniors that really are not, they, what my mom, especially one, she goes, what's that, do that thing that you do on the line, you know, or whatever. So she doesn't have any clue about that kind of stuff. And so it's, it's helpful if they have something physical they can look at too as well. Absolutely. And again, you know, we, we try to make it accessible for all. So people are welcome to come in. Um, I don't believe I mentioned this before, but we also accept appointments. I like to call it our Disney fast pass. <laughs> so you can call <laughs> and say, Hey, I want to come in Tuesday at 10 AM. And we're like, okay, great. Which, which location? Cause we have two locations for Pierce and St. Lucie West. And so if you call and set up an appointment in either location, you come right in, fast track in, get, handle your business and you're out the door or you're welcome to, you know, to catch. Normally we don't have a line, but during this time of February, it can get a little busy with filing for exemptions. Yeah. So it helps to have an appointment. Absolutely. Well, it's just, you know, I'm, I know I try to be as effective with my time as I can be. So <laughs> if, if you're concerned about time, definitely call us and make an appointment or you can make an appointment online as well. But like you said, some people don't feel comfortable hopping online for, for any of the business and that's okay, call us. Okay, that's awesome. And that number again is 772-462-1000? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. All right. Very if you good. may continue our test of Michelle, I mean, she, she, she's doing great. Um, the veterans exemption, what uh, for people who may be a veteran and not realize there's an exemption out there for them? Yes, yeah, so it is related. Um, is it, It's not applicable to all veterans. So that's why I say give us give us a call and we'll walk you through depending upon um, the requirements that are necessary to meet that. At least and, know to make the call right <laughs> yeah i think it's important because uh, sometimes people think that these are available to everybody but you have to have the homestead exemption first correct you, in, as opposed almost to all cases you need to, yes you need to be a florida resident you need to own and occupy the property okay okay great and all of these exemptions are you know our office the property appraiser's office actually our authority that we answer to is is the state of Florida. So all of these exemptions are throughout the state of Florida. 
Um, you know, it's not something that we can dictate here at the local level as far as an income amount or any kind of requirements. They are set for Florida throughout the entire state. Okay. Yes. That's great. So um, this came up this weekend during showings of mine. So I wanted you to take a few minutes and discuss the portability. Some people call it a tax portability, but it really is their homestead exemption that's portable. Is that correct? So it is, yes. So what portability is, and this came in 2006, I had to think back. So 2006, Florida voters voted to enact what is known as portability. It was for 10 years. So in 2016, it came up again. Florida voters then decided we're gonna make this permanent. So this is forevermore now. So if you have tax savings on any homesteaded property in the state of Florida, you can now port that tax savings from one address to another address in Florida. So we're here in St. Lucie County and we purchased a home 10 years ago. We have $80,000 of portability and that is $80,000 of tax savings that we are not paying our taxes on because we receive, receive that benefit of save our homes, the 3% cap. Right. So every year that 3% was going up and up that created that $80,000 of value that you do not have to pay taxes on at this address. You now take that $80,000 from 123 Main Street and you're able to port that over to any address in the state of Florida, reducing that value by the $80,000. So in St. Lucie County, if you're here, we've given you a, a real easy way to figure out what your portability is. You can hop on the website, or again, you're welcome to call us, and write on your trim notice, which is displayed on there all year long, or even on your property record card, you will see Save Our Homes Amendment 10 benefit. It's the purple section on your trim notice on page two. And on the record card, you can see it under values. So and it's you, called Save Our Homes. Save Our Homes. And so that amount there, and again, in my example, it was $80,000. You're going to take that to a new home. If the property you're going to, your new property is more valuable, equal or more valuable than the current property where you where you gained that save our homes benefit from you are going to take the entire benefit with you to the new home if you are downsizing not not in size but downsizing in value right. Right. you're going to take a portion of that benefit okay so again everybody is going to have a completely different save our homes amount i wish i could say this is really nice and easy but it's not. So call us. We are more than happy to walk you through. Okay, you currently have $80,000 of value. Do you know the address of where you're headed? Or we can say what, what roughly, you know, what is the sales price? What is the value you're going to purchase this for? And then we can help you figure out what that'll do to your future tax bills. Okay. Yeah. So it's in this, not a percentage. This, it's not a flat percentage. That was the conversation this weekend. I said, I don't think that's correct. So I'm so glad you were here today to clear. Yeah, perfect timing. Yes. Yeah. It, was. And it, is, it is really challenging to figure, like I said, especially because everyone's going to be different. So, you know, if I talk to my neighbor, like, oh, work this way for me, that doesn't mean it's, it's going to work that way for the next person. So I encourage people to, to call us and to hop online and we'll walk you through what it means for, for each individual you know, property owner. Yes. And it is in the whole state, no matter, let's say you live in uh, Tallahassee now and you're going to move to Jupiter. Absolutely. Throughout the state of Florida. So it does not count for anybody from the Northeast that's coming right. to Florida because you didn't have an exemption in Florida the prior year. Now, the other thing that I want to mention with portability, because it gets a little, a little interesting sometimes, is that there is a little caveat that you can take your, your portability and basically put it on hold for two January 1s. So remember, you know, I like to tease that we only work one day a year, January 1. <laughs> Everything really comes back around and, you know, establishes from that one date. 
Right. So now I have a, a an office of professionals that are working hard throughout the year, but I, I kind of make that joke to help people remember <laughs> January one is the day. So on January one, if you say I sold my home, um, today's February, February 14th, I sold my home February 14th, 2022. If I'm waiting, maybe I'm, maybe I'm waiting on the market. Maybe I'm waiting on a new build Wait, You know, maybe I have somewhere to stay for the next little bit with the friend, whatever I'm going to do. I can miss January 1, 2023 and January 1, 2024. But before January 1, 2025, I have to establish a new homestead in the state of Florida to be able to keep that portability. Oh, okay. That's great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so know, know that you that. can, yeah, if you choose to, you know, camp around the state of Florida for two years in, you know, in your new travel trailer, you're welcome to do that. But before that third January one, you have to establish that homestead in order to not lose the portability. Oh, very okay. good. Good. Okay. That's excellent. good to know. Yes. So, so now one quick question. If they lost their portability and, and after January of 2025, and they bought in like July, if they lost that portability, would they, but they did reestablish a, a property, would they start new with Homestead then with that property? And then exactly start over. Okay. okay. Exactly. And each and every time you purchase a property, you're, you're actually going to start new with your exemption. You're going to start new with a base year. Right. Okay. And then from that base year, you know, you can increase 3% a year in a positive market. Um, nobody wants to talk about, but if, if something should happen with the market and it goes below your cap value, you will go down at the same rate. Okay. So, you know, you, you, you go down with the market all the way. That's a benefit for your, your tax savings, but you can only go up 3%. Now, if somebody happens to be listening that is not homesteaded, know that your cat protection, you don't have to file for it, but there is an automatic cat protection at 10% for non-homesteaded properties. So that means if, you know, if you have commercial, if you have vacant land, if you just have a second home, um, you are capped at 10% automatically. You do not need to file for that. Okay. That's okay. Great. Yeah. And somebody who has a non-homesteaded property, but then let's say three years after they buy that, they choose to become a Florida resident at that time, they could file for their homestead before March 1st. Absolutely. When, whenever they decide to become a resident, talk to us right away. Let's get you filed. We'll figure out where it is, where it is in the tax year and how quickly we can get that exemption. Okay. So I encourage people, you know, some people have a reason to not become a Florida resident and that's okay, but I encourage people to always look at the options because our real estate taxes really have a benefit if you become a Florida resident. Oh yes, yeah. There are a lot of benefits to be a, to being a Florida resident. Florida resident, yeah. Absolutely. I believe so too. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent. And outside of our beautiful sunny weather in February. <laughs> right. Oh yes. <laughs> so Michelle, um, I know your schedule is really tight. We want to be able to let you go as quickly as possible. Is there one final message that you want to leave with everybody before you go? Um, I th thank you, number one, for the opportunity. It's always a well, pleasure we, to, we to really spend some time with you ladies. Um, but I, I think the one th takeaway that I hope everyone has is please call us. It is our pleasure to serve you. We would love the opportunity to walk you through any type of of questions that you have related to the property appraiser's office has three main main functions. We value property, we ex we do the exemptions on those property, and we're also the official mapper for St. Lucie County. So if there's anything related to those three topics that we can assist with, please reach out to us. It'd be our pleasure to serve you. And those Thank maps you. are always changing. Well, we keep trying. When we get information back on on layers, um, well, number one, they're changing because of purchases, so we're constantly updating for that. But we also take requests for layers that would be helpful. So you can find layers of, you know, for neighborhood names. You can find layers for school districts. You can find layers for wind speeds and flood zones. And I, you know, I I can't even name everything that we have a layer for now. That's awesome. Wonderful. Yeah, that's fabulous. That's yeah, and we're always looking for feedback on the website as well. I know you ladies are 
our frequent users. Um, so if there's anybody else out there that has comments and suggestions for the websites, we're, we're in constant enhancement mode. You know how quickly te technology moves. Oh, it does. Yes. <laughs> Constantly changing. Definitely. And I'm always behind. <laughs> it's always reassuring to know that. Well, I think we're all behind. I mean, you cannot stay ahead of that. So, yeah. right. <laughs> okay. True. Well, thanks again very much. Um, happy Valentine's Day. We appreciate your visit always and have a wonderful rest of your week. You as well. Thank you so much, ladies. Take good care. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Bye bye. And if we are ready for a, a commercial break, we will be right back. Are you looking for your dream home? I am Eileen Simons, a licensed realtor with eXp Realty. My team and I can help you find your dream home on the Treasure Coast and beyond. I bring 20 plus years experience with the residential real estate market, helping both buyers and sellers achieve their dreams. Call or text me at 772-200-5105 or visit our website at mydreamhomeusa.com. Hi, I'm Jacob Tracy of the men's basketball team at the River. The IRSC tradition of champions is continuing. The men's basketball team has achieved its fifth consecutive 21 season for Coach Charlie Wilson. The IRSC Lady Pioneers are continuing to win ways as well. Baseball and softball have started in the classroom. The entire athletic department is averaging better than a 3.2 GPA with 18 athletes getting straight A's. The tradition of champions continues at the river. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And we are back on My Florida Dream Home radio show. We are with uh, Eileen Simons and Paula Brady of EXP Realty. And if you'd like to join the conversation, 772-340-1590. So um, I thought it was pretty interesting today to talk about the um, highest prices that have recently sold in the area. One of the newspapers did a top 15 recently, so we have a top 30. <laughs> that works. Of course, I'm not going to go through all top 30, but uh, when I did this search on the MLS, um, and it doesn't, it, I didn't include private sales. These are sales on our MLS system, which covers a major portion of the whole East Coast of Florida. Um, but I started at $5 million because I knew that the top 30 would be over that amount. Wow. Yes. Okay. And this is on the Treasure Coast, right? This is, this okay. is. Um, $5 million and above. Yep. Okay. So this first one is in Stewart and it closed at Oh, different sheet. Uh-oh. Um closed at 5 5 I can't even talk today. 5.1 million. Wow. So that's the low end of the, of yeah, the that's the low yeah. end of the top 30. Wow. Just out of curiosity, can you tell what area of Stewart? I mean, it's uh, uh, yes, it this is Sailfish Point. Uh -huh. uh, yes. So that is, is I that can tell I can tell a neighborhood like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yep. Uh, here's another one from Sailfish Point 7.9. That's nice. Uh -huh. That's yes. Uh, where's this one? Uh, this one is in uh, Jupiter. It was 5.1. So that's the low end for that area. Yeah, right. That may not even be waterfront. I, I don't know. No, not the low end for that area, but that is the low end of, of the, the top, top 30. 30. Yeah, top that's 30. that's okay. actually what I meant. I didn't clarify. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's a Hope Sound address that, that closed for six, 6 million. Wow. Ah, oh, look at this one. This is up up toward the higher end of the list. This one's on Jupiter Island uh, with a Hope Sound address for twenty one million. Ooh, okay. Yippers. That's, 
picture makes it look like it was waterfront or like oh, ocean okay. front. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's a given. So. Yeah. That's pretty much a given unless there's acreage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, here's another Hope Sound address that was 15. A Jupiter that it was uh, 12.8. My goodness. And I know that I had somehow they got out of order. Let me see if I can. The most, the, the highest of the high. It might have been the one that I already did, but uh, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Anyway, the point is that if you want a very high end property and you still want to be on the Treasure Coast, it's very possible. You don't have to go further south for that. Still, still enjoy. Um, so yeah, the one that I already talked about, that was the high end. This one is another one. This is one in Palm Beach Gardens. Um, that was 11.9. Okay. Nice. Yes. So all the rest of these. It'd be fun to see those homes. <laughs> yes. It'd be yeah. Just, see them. just oh, a tour. Just, here it is. This is Hope Sound also. Obviously from the picture, which you can't see, but it's a beautiful view of the ocean. Yeah. Um, this was 25 million. Ooh, okay. Single family detached home, 25 million. And how many bedrooms does it say? Um, six bedrooms, mm -hmm. seven bathrooms. Uh, total square feet is over 11. 11,000. 11, 11, 11, 11, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a big, big one. place. That's and it comes big. with staff. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you pay extra for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah that you, would need, you would that need that. Extra. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would need that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's amazing, wow. isn't it? Wow. Anyway, I thought it was kind of fun to go through those and see um, that we do have those kinds of properties in this here. area. Yes. Yeah. Good, good to know. You but don't now have there, to go further south. There, there is hope for the rest of us, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Paula has yeah. some of that here. I oh, have a few okay. for the rest of us. <laughs> I don't know if we're ready for that part or not yet, but um, we'll get we'll get there. Did you have more to to tell us? No, me? that's all we're going to talk about the top thirty on the Treasure Coast. Yeah, yeah. Or on or near the Treasure Coast, yeah, I should say. Right. Yes. And you know the funny thing is, we're going to get somebody. If I can ever find somebody who to absolutely define where the Treasure Coast is for us, because depending on who you talk to, it's larger or smaller right it covers more of the coastline or it covers less of the coastline and it seems like as the treasure coast becomes more popular it seems to grow in a distance. bit yeah yeah that so makes sense <laughs> one of these days i'm going to find somebody who will really technically define what the treasure coast is for us and uh, hopefully they'll come on the show and talk about that then I think there's several definitions. There's the historical definition. There's probably a real estate definition. There's the uh, the, the, the broadcast market definition. definition. Oh, there's, that's true yeah. too. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of different ways to to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but I think there. I mean, I've heard south of us is called the Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, but, but again, that, where does that start? I thought it started like Jupiter South. Well, that's what I thought too. But then there are some people who say that the Treasure Coast goes much further, further than south. we think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, and I thought this area was considered the Treasure Coast because of the 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 diving and the the finds of uh, shipwrecks the treasure with the treasures. Trip. Yeah. So that was like Fort Pierce, and this area was. One yeah, the, but then there are other people that say, oh, no, the Treasure Coast extends a lot further north also. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay. That's true. Yeah. So Sebastian. Yeah. Sebastian, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and I don't know what they call it further north than that, though. Um, well, there's the Space Coast. The Space Coast, there's yeah. There's the First Coast. Yep. So there, there are, what, 14 around the state? Or I don't know the number, but yeah, every, every section of Florida has, has a, a name a for name. the area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, that's that is interesting to figure out. Mm -hmm. What I have in my mind is probably not this oh, yeah. the <laughs> same as anybody else. But <laughs> so any of our listeners out there, if you are an expert yes. on where exactly the Treasure Coast begins and ends, we would love to talk to you. Right. 
<laughs> um, which reminds me, uh, if you want to contact us, you can call or text the phone number 772-200-5105. You can also send messages to our email if you don't like to use the phone, if you have suggestions for guests or for neighborhoods that we can feature, please feel free to send us an email to mydreamhometeam at yahoo.com. Um, as I explained last week, our website is under construction, so it is more user-friendly. <laughs> Everybody's website is under construction. Under construction. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, those are those things you have to keep up with that yeah. are like so hard. Yeah. Right. Uh, we'll wait till that's done to give it to you again. But the two easiest ways to reach us are 772-200-5105 or mydreamhometeam at yahoo.com. Very good. And certainly, or, you know, we will be uh, here for another um, 18 minutes. Give us a call. Yes, absolutely. If you have something you want to discuss today, uh, just give us a call. Or if you want to suggest topics for the future, that's actually how we got our guests last week, because somebody had called in a couple of weeks prior to that and asked about landlord tenant issues. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jaron last week was kind enough to Join us, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Give us yep. more information about that. Yeah, right. We'll call us at 340-1590. Right. My dream home team is growing. If you are currently a real estate agent or you're thinking about becoming a real estate agent and joining the industry, uh, right now it's probably one of the fastest growing industries that there are. Yeah. Uh, I just read statistics on the National Association of Realtors. Now, this is not all agents because, of course, not all agents are realtors, but there's over 1.5 million licensed realtors in the country now. Wow, 1.5. Yes. And of that, Florida has more licensed realtors than any other state in the country. That's Mm -hmm. believable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. Becoming a more and more popular place all the time. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm great with that as long as people remember that this is a nice, relaxing, slow-paced environment. That's the way Florida is, and we hope that it stays that way. If you're in a hurry... It's not well, the spot leave to your come. hurry where you came yeah. from. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah. It's, it's leave your relax, hurry behind. Relax life that people are coming here, here for. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yes. In general, people are very congenial, polite, uh, courteous, and we want to keep it that way. Exactly. Except for when they get in the deli line at the store. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little harried, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all want to just come down here and chill, relax, yeah, just, just relax. Easier. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. part of the, yeah. you know, that's part of what the sunshine and the beautiful climate does, I think. It and just the seashore to too. Nice yeah. Deep breath and relax. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I'm stressed out, the first place I go to is to the beach. Yeah, me too. I love it. Even, even, even a 15 minute walk on the beach, just sort of calms you down. You. Yeah, and if Greg has told you about our tradition, every New Year's Day we go to the beach, we walk on the beach, and we make a resolution that we're going to spend more time walking on, on the, the beach. beach. Has that worked? Every year at New Year's we go <laughs> we back the, to the beach. Oh God. <laughs> you <laughs> you make the same resolution. resolution. <laughs> That's why I don't try to make resolutions. I just try to get there as often as I can. That's all. I do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. and it's it is difficult when you're busy and you know families and all that kind of stuff and work. But um, it is it's the best place to go. It's so relaxing. If mm-hmm. I could have two or three hours with the book on the beach, that would just be heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, One more thing to mention, if you uh, have been a real estate agent for a long time and you're thinking about retiring, then please call us because we have a way that you can make your retirement lucrative. Yes. So again, a real estate license in another state, you have to go through the no relicensing here or no. Well, if, if you, you wanna, want to work in Florida, uh-huh, then yes, you do. You yes. must have. A, yes. Each yes. state is different mm-hmm. as far as your real estate license is concerned. Um, so if you want 
to have a real estate license and if you want to work as a realtor or a real or a licensed agent in Florida, you must have a Florida license to do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. But even if you're from another state, we belong to a wonderful um, company. Brokerage, yeah. Right. Yeah. Our company is not a franchise company. We all work under the same umbrella. So it, uh, it not only does it make it wonderful for collaboration, but all of our meetings and trainings are online. So we can be in a training or we can be in a meeting from somebody from actually because we're in an international company. So somebody from another company even. So we are able to communicate and meet people from all over the world in the, in the EXP world which is where all of our trainings and meetings are. And we could even be sitting by the pool or at the beach. Yes, you can <laughs> to do that or driving the boat or playing soccer, soccer or whatever you want to do in the lighthouse. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's a great campus. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. It's very, the nice part is you've got access to help anytime you need it. You don't have to wait for, you know, somebody you can, we actually have a, like it's a Facebook, but for work, and you can put a comment or a need or a question, and somebody will get back to you with that. They'll respond to your question with with the answer that you need. You so you've you've have access to help anytime you need it. That's the thing that I think is awesome. Yes, that's, that's absolutely twenty four seven basically right. because somebody's always on there. Right. Sure. So sure. it doesn't close. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought this was a pretty interesting article. I read this recently and it talks about home buyers over the past two years. Everybody knows by now that the market has just been crazy since COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, you know, we're coming up on that two year anniversary now. And a lot of people have made moves in the country all over the place because they find it much easier to do that now because they don't have to physically be in an office many times. So they've made the choice to make a move. But what that has done is that he has forced buyers to make much quicker decisions, decisions than they would have made before. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the articles that I read this past week talks about the fact that over the past two years, buyers have viewed fewer houses than ever before. I believe the number is eight now. So they viewed eight houses before they made a decision which one they were going to purchase. That's partially because inventory is so low and partially because they have to make a quick decision. Right. Well, you keep hearing, you know, if you don't take it now, somebody else will come in and pay more for it. And oh, an yeah. hour later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 In fact, you know, yeah. two days yeah. on the market, I, two properties this week that I, this past week, that I showed one very high end and one like like a medium range. Both of those had multiple offers their second day on the market. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It really is. Yeah. But that's what this article talks about, that buyers are making such quick decisions now. 75% of home buyers acknowledge some regret over their recent home purchase. Uh-oh. <laughs> buyers oh, remorse? Okay. Or that's not a regret in some way or another. Yeah. Right. More work than it needed or right. not exactly what they let, wanted and, or where right. they wanted. So the moral of this story is uh, make sure you are working with your realtor in advance so that you are making the best decision that you can with your new home purchase. And maybe you won't have these regrets. Right, right. Well, what kind of things, at price, are they in uh, paying tremendously more than the they had been? Because I wonder. When you hear the so three quarters of the respondents said they'd wish they had done at least one thing differently they don't, they're not specific about okay. what that one thing is, but mm -hmm. he had done one thing differently while searching for their home. Huh. Um, I saw another one here. Let me make. Yeah. Oh, 32% of buyers regretted buying a house that needed more maintenance than they had expected. Ah, okay. You sure. know, what people don't sure. realize is no matter what house you buy, 
whether it's a, um, a previously loved home or whether it's a new construction home, there's always maintenance involved. Right. If it's a brand new home, you have those first decisions of what kind of window decor am I going to use? And you need to, um, you need to make sure that you install all of the hardware that you're going to need for your window decor and, and all those kinds of things. And you want to, you, normally my experience is that people buy, that buy brand new homes, they change the landscaping or they increase the landscaping. Or, so it doesn't matter if you buy a new home or if you buy a previously loved home, they all require maintenance. And if you are going to protect your investment, which is probably the largest investment you will, all, you will make as an adult, if you are going to protect that investment, then you're going to maintain your property. Mm -hmm. sure. It's just, it, it's, it's part of the picture. Right. So if you think you're going to buy a property and not have to maintain it, and if you don't personally maintain it, then you're going to hire somebody to maintain it, or you're, go you're going to belong to an HOA that does the maintenance for you. But any way, shape, or form, there has to be, be maintenance done to the property in order for it to maintain its value. True. Slowly but surely, things just don't work anymore. Don't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't. Well, yeah, like, you know, we had the, the HVAC guy on and he said, typically in Florida, you, you have to get a new air conditioning system more often here because of the use that it gets, you know, it, it's used much more than it would be up north where you're only going to use it six months out of the year here. You're going to use it all year long, just about. So right. there, it's going to go quicker. You're going to have to change those things out, you know, and the and, coastline affects that also right. if you're inland, maybe 10 years. If you're closer to the coastline, you know, he more said often. it could be um, much more often than that. Yeah. Yeah. lifespan might only be half of that yeah and one thing that we found is that we had to paint our house within five years of buying it because the the paint faded because of the exposure to the sun yes so you know it depends on the color you use and that kind of thing we had no clue so you know until you experience it those are things that you don't expect you know but um yes you know, there's always so there's something. always going to be something <laughs> right <laughs> so, so before we run out of time paula do you have a couple of uh, current current listings on the market to tell people about yes we do um first i'm going to give you um home in four pierce it is a let's see what is it a four bedroom where do i boy i've lost okay four bedroom sorry two and a half bath home it has 3,883 square feet of living space. So that's a good size house. Mm -hmm. um, and they are asking, and let's see, it's a waterfront property with six acres. So it's a good size home. Unique it's been, piece of property. Right, yeah. right. A new roof was installed, remodeled kitchen, light fixtures, dishwasher, new septic system with a new drain field. So there's not a whole lot that you're going to have to do on this home, hopefully, when you first move in. And you can actually build a yacht. I mean, a, a yacht. <laughs> build a dock. dock right. <laughs> a dock that's already has. For the, your yacht. For your yacht. yacht. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but it's already been approved by the Corps of en Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers. So you'll have access to the water if you do that. And they are asking 849900 so eight hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred, nice size home, and that's Water in Fort front. Pierce. That's in Fort Pierce, yeah. So, so then, if you like the beach, you'd also be close to the um, bridge, yeah, to go to the island right. to be on the beach. So not going to have everything that's available here. <laughs> then um, we have a single family residence. This is in Port St. Lucie. It's a three bedroom, two bath home. 2,146 square living feet. Uh, it's a spacious, I, did I say two bedroom? I'm sorry. It's a spacious three bedroom, two bath with an oversized two car garage. With oh, a, people like extra space in their garage. Yeah, they do. And a side entrance. Some people don't like that face on entrance into the garage. So this is a side entrance. Uh, they're asking 478,000 for that home. Um, and you said that was in Port St. Lucie, right? It is in Port St. Lucie. Yeah. Okay. 
And then we have another single family home in Port St. Lucie that is a three bedroom, two bath, screened pool, metal roof, um, screened outdoor porch with a fence. So it's got a lot of nice features to it. It is 1,618 square living feet and they're asking 383,000 for that home. Seems in like Port St. Lucie. In Port St. Lucie. Right. Okay, one more Port St. Lucie. Um, we have a three bedroom, a two bath home. It's um, spacious, formal living and dining rooms, covered front porch, uh, family room and kitchen with a convenient breast, breakfast nook. Um, they are asking 340,000 for that home. So three bedroom, two bath home, again in Port St. Lucie. Let's see if you wanna go to Stewart. We have a home in Stewart that, actually this is a condo in Stewart. It's a two bedroom, two bath, first floor oceanfront condominium. So wow. this one is, sounds like a nice spot. <laughs> they, it has, um, 1,545 square living feet, and they're asking $595,888 for that home. Okay. Can you do so, one more? And then we're going to make sure we give Michelle's contact information before we go off the air. Sure. Now, this is a Palm City property. It's a three bedroom, three bath home with 14.2 acres wow. uh, with an equestrian training facility. Wow. So sounds like a really nice place. Two barns, 12 stalls, covered arena. So if you need something like that, be perfect for you. They're asking 2900000 for that 14.2 acres and home. Yes. A lot of people don't know that those kind of properties are available in the Palm City area. Right. So that's a great one. To right. Talk about. So, that's great. And where do people reach you if, if they want to uh, know um, about these, uh, these homes? 772-200-5105. You can call or text that number and um, Paula and I are both available to it. You can also send us an email to mydreamhometeam at yahoo.com. And once more, we want to thank Michelle Franklin, the St. Lucie County property appraiser for all of her time today. And her phone number is 772-462-1000. Yes. And they also have a website, which is www.paslc.gov. Yes. Make sure you use the .gov. Right. And you can ask them any questions that you might have about your property and tax exemption. Yes. Well, awesome. thank you. We, thank we've you. done it again. Yeah. We made it. Again next <laughs> and we want to say thank you to Carol for Carol. filling in for Greg, who's out on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And nice congrats day. to Matthew Stafford. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, ah, yes, definitely. <laughs> he okay. got his ring. This That's is good. WPSL, Port St. Lucie.